Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do some more DIY Dollar Tree St. Patrick's Day Farmhouse DIYs. Um, for the first project, or one project, we're going to use one of these shamrocks, but whatever shamrock, you want to draw a picture, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we're going to use one of these buffalo check scarves out of this set, but you could use either one if you want more color. You could use either one. And then the green wreath form that they have at the Dollar Tree. We're also going to use some more moss like we used in the project yesterday. Um, and as well as the, finally going to use that banner portion off of this Frankenstein, we <laughs> totally Frankenstein this wreath. Also some green twine, any really twine helps, just the green hides better, that's all. And then for the second project, we're going to use tags. We're going to use one of the skinny tags from Christmas, two of the short fat tags that we're going to make shorter and fatter. Um, but you could use whatever tags you have, a poster, you know, boards that you want. You can always cut the corners off of a square board. Um, but the inspiration for this was uh, directly from Pinterest from Etsy. But I knew that we could make it for a lot less than $38. Oh, we have a couple of changes to it just so we don't completely copy it 100%, but you could if you wanted to. Um, so the first thing that I'm doing is I cut the bottom off of these tags to make them short and squatty like the inspiration piece. And now I'm getting the sticker off now there's so many different ways to get stickers off i don't have a heat gun and i don't have a hair dryer but both of those work great goo gun i always find leaves a little oily residue sometimes it's hard to paint over that um, so what i just did was use rubbing alcohol sometimes helps but today i want to show you another trick where i'm just taking my basically my a utility knife but I open it real wide so that the blade is flexible and it just got right under the sticker it takes a second a little bit of patience but you just get right under there and you get the whole thing now I messed up a little bit and forgot to sand off the glue um, so it does show up on the, um, the under the paint however this inspiration again was supposed to look all kinds of old and ratty so what is a little bit of texture underneath the paint gonna be I don't know not nothing bad for me I'll tell you that much um, so we're going to make the big tall one white as well as one of the short squatty ones. Um, and then we're going to make the other short squatty one green. You didn't see me cut both of them, but it's the same process. Um, and then the green I'm using is Spanish moss. At first I was trying to get a really good coat on this and I'm like, Jerry, what are you doing? It's supposed to be antique and you're going to age it. So don't kill yourself, guys. <laughs> and then we're going to hit this one with Spanish moss. The Spanish moss is from the... Uh, it's by Plaid, but it's folk art brand chalk paint. And I just love this color this year for St. Patrick's Day. So some of my footage got corrupted, but I was just showing you how to make a shamrock. I took a heart shape that I liked, and I made three of them, connected them with a little curved line, and added a stem, and then cut it out. Now, this shamrock I left... Um, when I cut the shamrock out, I left spaces between them. But I'm showing you two different paintings, basically, to look like... This one's going to close up the holes between the leaves almost entirely. The other one's going to be like open. So just to give you an idea that you can use the same template to do different things. I just outlined it with my chalk pen, but you can pro you can see this with a pencil. I'm just, you can't see it on camera with a pencil. So I am, you know, using the chalk pen. Um, and then I'm just painting it in. I'm using white chalk paint. I will tell you it is not a smoothest line that you can get with chalk paint on chalk paint, but it does work. It just, you'd probably have to use a tiny bit more paint on your brush to get that smooth move that you can. So the inspiration said luck. I wanted to put lucky. Um, I actually didn't do it on purpose. I th thought it said lucky, um, but lucky's like my brother's nickname. So I just was like, hey, you know, lucky's on a lot of things and whatever. It probably will look cute with luck because you have a little bit more room, <laughs> but lucky is what I chose. And I'm just showing you here how one way to set up lettering. A lot of people have asked me about lettering a lot. What I did is I measured the space. The space was 10 inches, um, leaving a, a half an inch or an inch on one side and then starting where I wanted to start on the left side where the top of the tag is. And then I put, it was going to be two inches for each letter plus their space so the letters themselves are an inch and a half wide I'm putting a half an inch between each letter um, which actually will make up the 10 inches perfectly um, and then I decided to make the lines of the letters each uh, a half an inch as well so uh, not a half an inch yeah a half an inch with a half, uh, a half an inch in between but you could do you know a quarter of an inch whatever you want to whatever thickness 
And then I took that straight edge. I basically lined it up at the bottom of the tag. I didn't even worry about anything else. And then I drew all of my um, vertical lines. Um, for the U, I didn't go all the way to the bottom. Um, but you can erase it with pencil, and that's one of the reasons we do use pencil. Um, I like the pencils from the Dollar Tree that have white erasers because when you erase on white paint, you won't leave any of that pink residue behind. And now I'm just filling in all of the letters with the chalk paint. Um, wherever there was a curve, I went ahead and I added a curve. I was loving the way that the look, the, the L looked with a fat bottom. And then I was like, oh, let's make the bottoms fat. And then I was like, well, how am I going to make the bottom fat on a K and a Y? And you'll see here in a minute, I'm just making them almost like they have bell bottoms. <laughs> making the legs a little wider at the bottom just to add a little bit difference now the inspiration piece not only did it just say look and it was in more of a traditional kelly green but it also had like a little shamrock at the top and i was back and forth about like do i want to do that do i get stickers do i wait you know what am i going to do so i just left it um but you could add shamrocks you could add accents you can do whatever you choose um but this is just about really the lettering technique and about the antiquing technique we're going to use in a minute okay now, I'm not worried about the letters being absolutely perfect. I mean, I tried to keep straight line and spaces and stuff, but we're going to antique this. And when we antique it, um, we're going to kind of, you know, rough up the edges anyway. Now, here I am putting its string on without antiquing it. I forgot. This string, <laughs> this jute came from Wish. Uh, I got 10 meters for a dollar plus the shipping I think came to a dollar eighty um, but it's really nice thick and braided um it's the perfect thickness for this tag but you know we've used the Dollar Tree's nautical rope and other tags of the same size before so um, so what I've done is I've taken a piece of sandpaper and I've roughed it up um, then what I've done is I've taken a wipe um, and then I've wiped off all the sand. And what that did do was it spread out some of the green paint to add like a green streak. And then what I did was I took Waver the same wipe. I added some Waverly's antique wax in antique. And I went and I hit all of the parts that I sanded. I went in the same direction. Imagine if this was real wood and it was weathered. It would be weathered in the direction that the wood would be, which would normally be from the top to the bottom. So I just went in that same direction with the antiquing medium, um, and I did this for all three. Uh, the only difference, I think, was for the green one, I really hit it really hard with that edge of that sandpaper. I wanted to see there, I wanted real good streaks in there because I knew that I needed something to have the brown, to help the brown show up a little bit better on the green one than I did on the white ones, uh, which makes sense if you think about it, right? <laughs> um, and again, you could outline these, you could do different, I actually have different tying techniques on all of them. Well, not really, this, this last two, the two small tags have the same tying technique, they just, one has a longer string. Um, but the inspiration had really long strings, so if you want to do that, you go ahead and do that. And hopefully you caught everything that I did. Um, but basically, the one big tag, I put the string straight through, tied it at the very top of the tag, and then tied it at the top of the loop. And for the other two, I did the thing that I always do when I put the loop through the tag, and then put the knotted end through the loop. And that's that. That's the three of them. I love the way they came out. I'm so happy I got them. <laughs> so for this one, if you watched the previous video with the red truck, green truck, we tore this off with very carefully, painted it white. While the white was still wet, I took the edge of the paintbrush um, that had the green. This is actually right after I painted those tags. Both of these paintbrushes, I wrapped them in white so they stay moist and then I use them and it's just as easy as following that line around and pulling and dragging through the wet paint. Um, I took the green glitter marker that I bought at the Dollar Tree and I wrote Henson's but I want to tell you while it was still wet I hated the first S so I just took an alcohol wipe and I went ahead and wiped it away. You can see a a fair touch of green there but because I antiqued it with green already I dragged green across it to give it like highlights and lowlights then it you really don't notice that it's different does that make sense um, and then I just put the Henson's on it now I'm taking the black and green scarf this is left over from the truck project and what I did was I made a uh, I cut a strip that was 
one black and one green wide. However, it started in on the green a little bit and I ended it in on the green a little bit, if that makes any sense. So I do have two full checks. It's just that the green is not full left to right, if that makes sense. And the reason I did that was because that's the way the scarf was cut and I wanted to have even stripes. I didn't want to use too much material because then I would have to lose a lot when it was bending around the wreath. And all I did was glue the end of each strip, covered it with the cut end of the of the next strip and then just wrapped it around the entire wreath. I ended up using two whole strips, one three quarter strip and then one like quarter strip. Um, if you had a new scarf, you probably just need three strips, okay? Now I'm taking the glitter shamrock. I've removed all of the glitter garland. I'm sorry that video, I didn't start the camera when I started doing that, which was bad. And now I'm just taking some jute and I'm replacing some of it with jute in different haphazard directions. The reason I'm doing that is because it wants to hold the moss on there better. Now, if you don't have these shamrocks, you could just do like we did the other day, cut out a shamrock. You could either cut it out of poster board or you could cut it out of foam board. Foam board would probably be better. It'd give you good dimension and then cover it with the Spanish moss or not the Spanish moss, excuse me, the, <laughs> the floral moss. Um, I'm just taking my time. I'm piling it on. I am wrapping the edges. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing, adding some to the top, waiting a second or two or five till it cools down just enough for me to touch it. And then I'm wrapping some around the back and I'm holding it in tight. So it's basically gluing to both sides of the string. And I'm only doing this around the edges because this shamrock will hang all off the wreath on the edges. And if you do put this on the back of a door, you want to see it finished on the other side. Plus, it gives it nice clean and it gives it nice finished sides. And then when you have the, the stem done and everything, everything, you want to go ahead and give it a good haircut. You want to cut between the stem and give the hearts shape, if that makes sense. You know that there's three hearts. Give them shape. Give them their shamrock shape back. I know you thought I was going to say shamrock shake, right? Okay. Now I want to shamrock shake it. Now we're just going to glue it onto whichever part of your wreath you want to hide. <laughs> and I want to tell you that the other scarf does match this green so well that I didn't want to use it because I feel like I wanted the shamrock to stand out a little bit, which is why there's two different shades. But if you if this is objectionable to you, you could use the other scarf. It's fine. Um, but I just wanted it to be a little different. I took a little green burlap and I tied it around the top. I actually glued that loop on in two spots so it wouldn't roll with the heavy shamrock. Um, and then I tucked in some baby's breath underneath the shamrock just to make it stand away from the wreath a tiny bit. Tied on the Henson's plaque and you can move that any way you want. You can have it at the top or on the bottom, wherever you want. Okay, that's it for this video and these two projects. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making these or any of the techniques or any of the fun stuff. And as you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.